Welcome to the history of Samantha Carter. Samantha Carter is an astrophysicist, engineer, and pilot, as well as a member of the United States Air Force who played a key role in establishing the Stargate program before being assigned to the SGC's flagship team, SG-1, where she was second in command for eight years before becoming the commanding officer of SG-1 for a year, considered Earth's leading expert on the Stargate and a host of alien technologies. Her former commanding officer, Jack O'Neill, once empathically proclaimed her brain to be a natural resource. After serving on SG-1 for 10 years, during that time which she had saved her own life and those of her colleagues during various missions as a member of SG-1, the SGC, and as a member of the United States Air Force, Carter was eventually reassigned to the Atlantis expedition, which she led for over a year before being replaced by Richard Wolsey. In 2009, Carter was later made commander of the Daedalus class ship, the George Hammond, which was originally called the Phoenix, with the ship herself later being renamed the George Hammond in honor of the former commander of the Stargate program, George S. Hammond, who died in 2008 after suffering a heart attack. Carter is the daughter of Deborah and Jacob Carter, an Air Force Major General. She was born December 29, 1968, although Orlin seemed to believe that she was born in the month of May. She has a brother named Mark Carter, who is married and has two children, David and Lisa. In 2003, she told Adin Corso that she was named Samantha as her father had wanted a boy. Her mother died in the early 1980s when she was 12. She blamed her father, who was supposed to go pick her up at the airport but didn't, forcing Miss Carter to take a taxi and have an accident that killed her. Eventually, Sam forgave her father, although Mark didn't know until after many years of estrangement. She was exceptionally bright and went on to get a PhD in astrophysics with extensive knowledge in quantum mechanics while attending the U.S. Air Force Academy. She worked at the Pentagon for two years and logged over 100 hours in enemy space during the Gulf War. She was assigned to work on the Stargate project in 1993, two years before Dr. Daniel Jackson had had the opportunity and was a prominent member of the investigative sciences behind it and developing the Earth's dialing computer. It is not known whether she was the leader or just an important member of the team that designed the dialing computer. Captain Carter believed that she would have been part of the first team to go to Abydos with Colonel Jack O'Neill and Dr. Daniel Jackson. The reason why she ended up not going was due to the urgency to complete the important mission on time. Two years after the first Abydos mission, however, Carter, being the foremost expert on the Stargate, was able to join Colonel Jack O'Neill as his second-in-command when returning to Abydos to discover if the Gowald attackers who arrived on Earth previously were from the planet. Though she had a great scientific knowledge on the Stargate, she was not prepared for her first transport and was caught off guard when arriving to Abydos. It took her a few minutes, but she recovered. However, most immediately, she started investigating the Abydos Stargate and its dial home device. After meeting with the missing Dr. Daniel Jackson, Carter, along with him and O'Neill, visited the Abydos cartouche, discovering that the gate could go to several hundred worlds and the reason why Earth's Stargate could not dial any other planet than Abydos. She discovered that she could easily make the dialing computer do the necessary calculations. Along with the rest of the team and Jackson, she returned to Earth after Apophis attacked the Abydos Pyramid through the gate. After receiving the gate address of Apophis's homeworld, Chulak, from Major Louis Ferreri, she was assigned to O'Neill's SG-1 team. After the meeting, she and the team, along with Major Charles Kowalski's SG-2, arrived to Chulak. Upon discovering the village, Carter, along with the rest of SG-1, were thrown into a large cell with other Abedonians. The work of O'Neill was able to get the Jaffa Teal'c to join them and allowed Carter, along with others, to escape and return to Earth, along with the Abedonians. She remained with SG-1 after that mission and became one of Stargate's best officers. She's also their most brilliant scientist and expert on alien technology. She was engaged to Captain Jonas Hansen, later also of the SGC, but returned the ring when she realized he wasn't right for her, as he had a very domineering side. 
She was right to have broken it off as he would have took over Avnil and started acting like a god to its people. Carter bonded very tightly with a little girl named Cassandra from the planet Hanukkah and risked her life to provide her with some comfort when they thought Cassie was a time bomb. Cassie was eventually adopted by Dr. Janet Frazier, which allowed Sam and Janet to become relatively close friends over the years. 1998. During her second year at the Stargate Command, she was taken over by a Toker symbiote, Jolinar of Muscular, who sacrificed herself to save Sam from the Ashrak, a high-ranking assassin sent after Jolinar. This experience left her with the memories of the Tok'ra and a protein marker in her blood, allowing her to use Gowald technology, such as a Kara Kesh and a healing device, while also giving her the ability to sense Gowald or Tok'ra. Using the memories left by Jolinar of Mascular, Carter led SG-1 to a planet where the Tok'ra were hiding. She learned earlier that her father, Jacob Carter, was dying of cancer. She offered him as a host for the dying Tok'ra's Selmak, as a show of goodwill between the Tok'ra and the Tauri. She also made friends with the Tok'ra Martov, who had been involved with Jolinar before her death, which Sam left with some complex emotions regarding Martov. In 1999, for her efforts as both a member of SG-1 and the United States Air Force, Carter was later promoted to Major. In 2000, Carter along with Teal'c were beamed up by Colonel Jack O'Neill when Thor's ship was infested by replicators. After they destroyed the vessel and gated back to Earth, Carter went to Anthala to help coordinate its defense against the replicators. Carter came up with the idea of using the O'Neill to lure the replicator ships away and to destroy the ship in hyperspace, which also destroys the replicators. In 2001, after stealing Cronus's Hatak, SG-1 intended to use the vessel to evacuate the Tok'ra. Tanith, a spy serving Apophis, who sent word to Apophis, who brought his fleet. Samantha and Jacob Carter came up with a plan to destroy Apophis's fleet by blowing up Vorish's sun, by dropping a Stargate into it after dialing a planet in the orbit of the black hole. The plan worked but the Hatak Jacob and SG-1 were on were sent to another galaxy, along with Apophis' mothership. The replicators managed to capture and infest both ships, but SG-1 caused the Hatak to crash into Delmac, killing the replicators and Apophis while they returned home. Afterwards, Carter was doing research on a weapon on Velona, where she encountered an ascended being who unintentionally caused her to faint. After returning to Earth, Carter went on leave, but the ascended being named Orlin followed her to Earth, and the two began to fall in love. However, the NID was watching Carter, and Orlin returned to Velona to destroy the orbital weapon, which resulted in his death. 2002. When Teal'c was left trapped in the Stargate, Sam worked to save him in spite of a timeline of 48 hours. She also met and developed a strong grudge against fellow scientific rival Dr. Rodney McKay, who started out certain that Teal'c was already dead and referred to her as a dumb blonde, even after he was proven wrong and Teal'c was rescued. After Dr. Daniel Jackson's death, Colonel Jack O'Neill and Teal'c retreated into themselves causing resentment for Carter. She was not hostile to Jonas Quinn, although still opposed to allowing him into the SG-1. Around that time, Earth was attacked by Anubis, who attempted to cause the Stargate to overload. After Jonas gave Carter an idea to send the Stargate into space with the X-302 hyperspace fighter, Carter argued for Jonas to be allowed into SG-1, and O'Neill finally agreed. During that time, Carter also developed something of a mutual respect towards McKay, who the Pentagon had brought back from Russia to help with the crisis. In 2003, when the human form replicators merged on Hela, Carter bonded with Fifth, who was convinced to help stop the other replicators. Colonel Jack O'Neill, however, ordered Carter to leave Fifth behind, which Carter felt guilty over. Carter was set up on a date with Pete Shanahan, who knew Sam's brother, Mark Carter. Carter developed feelings for him, and the two began to see each other regularly. After Dr. Daniel Jackson descended and returned to SG-1, 
Anubis created the new Call Warriors, and Carter helped in the creation of a weapon used to neutralize them. 2004. After Colonel Jack O'Neill had the ancient's repository of knowledge downloaded into his brain, he was put into a stasis pod to preserve his life. Carter was able to convince Dr. Elizabeth Weir to allow Teal'c and herself to travel to the Athela Galaxy to seek the assistance of Thor. Carter was captured by Fit, who tortured her and sought to convince her he loved her, but he was eventually convinced to free her. She was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel and given the command of SG-1 as O'Neill was promoted to Brigadier General and given command of Stargate Command. Shortly afterwards, Pete Shanahan proposed to Carter, and she accepted. However, she was unaware that Fifth, who was unable to let go of his own feelings for her, created a replicator duplicate of Carter, also referred to as Replicarter. The year 2005. The Atlantis expedition had an opportunity to send a very brief data transmission to Earth. The first intergalactic email was successfully sent to Stargate Command and received by Carter and SM Sergeant Walter Harrisman. When the replicators, led by Replicator Duplicate of Carter, invaded the Milky Way, they wiped out most of the system lords. Carter worked with Thor to make the Replicator Disruptor viable again, but was unable to succeed. After learning of the Takara superweapon, Samantha Carter and Jacob Carter were able to use the device to destroy every replicator in the galaxy all at once, which also resulted in the destruction of the Gowald Empire. Afterwards, Carter began to doubt her decision to marry Pete Shanahan, due in part to the conversation with her father. And when her father died, she ended the relationship for good. Later, Carter was convinced to allow SG-1 to use the time jumper SG-1 found on the Harold Mayborn's planet to travel back in time to take a zero-point module from Ra. However, Horus guards found the puddle jumper they used, stranding SG-1 in the past. SG-1 attempted to form a rebellion, but Carter, Brigadier General Jack O'Neill, and Teal'c were killed, and Ra took the Stargate from Earth, changing history. However, an alternate Carter O'Neill and Teal traveled back in time and managed to repair history with the help of the original timelines, Dr. Daniel Jackson. With the collapse of the Gwald Empire, SG-1 disbanded itself. Carter transferred to Area 51, where she took command of the Stargate's research and development. Carter did not join Lieutenant Colonel Cameron Mitchell's efforts to reunite them, but came back temporarily when SG-1 tried to stop an Ori Supergate from forming on Kalana. She later joined SG-1 when it was officially reformed. When an Ori plague descended on Earth, Orlin descended himself to help the Tauri develop a cure, and Carter helped him. Their efforts eventually succeeded, but resulted in Orlin suffering brain damage and amnesia. 2006 Carter participated in the mission to save Daniel, who had been left stranded on Tegulus. Unfortunately, the mission became a battle for survival when an Ori satellite belonging to the Rand Protectorate struck the Prometheus twice, severely damaging the ship, even killing its personnel. Carter, along with Captain Kevin Marks, attempted to repair the ship but were unsuccessful. Carter, along with Marks and two-thirds of the Prometheus crew, were successfully beamed to safety seconds before the satellite launched a final attack, ultimately resulting in the Prometheus being destroyed, while also killing the Prometheus's commanding officer, Colonel Pendergast. While studying Merlin's data log, Lieutenant Colonel Cameron Mitchell, Carter, and Dr. Daniel Jackson were shifted into an alternate dimension. Daniel read the log and learned of the Sangrel, a weapon designed to kill ascended beings. Later, Carter went to the Supergate to dial the Alteran home galaxy, but was temporarily stranded when the gate activated. She was saved when Mitchell guided the Odyssey to bring her into the F-302 fighter interceptor bay. 2007. Carter was once shot by an Ori soldier while attempting to protect a village from the Ori forces by taking it out of phase with one of Merlin's inventions. Due to the fact that they were trapped, Mitchell used his medical training to keep Carter stabilized long enough for the team to return to the SGC 
with Carter eventually making a full recovery. Later, while experimenting with increasing the size of the area she could phase out with the same device, with an active force field around the her and the device, she was accidentally pulled into an alternate reality, where the Ori ships were headed towards Earth, and as a result the United States was under martial law. She managed to send the entire Earth out of phase using up to 95% of all of USA's power. She eventually made it back to her own reality. She was also part of a team to infiltrate the Altarian home galaxy to find the Ark of Truth and stop the Ori's threat. However, she had to stop the rebirth of the replicators. Sometime after those events, she was promoted to a full bird colonel and was responsible for the final stages of the completion of the Midway Space Station, along with Dr. Bill Lee, during the course of which she joined the search for the missing Atlantis on board the Apollo. After helping to locate the city, she assisted in its landing on M3-117 before returning to Earth to brief Major General Henry Landry. She was later sent back to Atlantis to take command of its operations after Dr. Elizabeth Weir went missing on Asuras. Weir having sacrificed herself to give John and the team time to escape. During this period, Carter accompanied Lieutenant Colonel John Shepard's team when a mission resulted in a team discovering Fenrir, apparently the last surviving member of the Asgard race, who had been exiled before the death of his people. Despite his grief and anger after learning about the death of his wraith, Fenrir provided Carter with the control of his ship so that she could destroy a wraith hive ship before he died as a result of a wraith suicide bomber. 2008. She recalled both the Daedalus and the Apollo, now fitted with Asgard plasma beam weapons to defeat the Assyrians once and for all, and worked with Dr. Rodney McKay to destroy their homeworld. Soon after rescuing Taylor from the hands of Michael Kenmore, she returned to Earth for an exhaustive review of her first year in command, and to attend the extraction ceremony of the last ball clone with Major General Jack O'Neill and SG-1, but instead she was informed that she was being removed from command and would be replaced by Richard Woolsey. With Major General Henry Landry opening the gate, she returned to SG-1 and traveled to the Tok'ra homeworld for the extraction ceremony and met up with Major General Jack O'Neill. The ceremony went through and the final Ball clone was killed and Vala Maldoran stayed behind to help Ball's host cope with the extraction because she knew what he was going through as a former host herself. And the rest of the team went to lunch on O'Neill. 2009 Carter was left temporarily in charge of Stargate Command while Major General Henry Landry headed a task force in Washington, D.C. During that time, she coordinated Earth's forces along with Major Paul Davis's of Homeworld Security when the planet was threatened by the Wraith's underling, Superhive. After Landry returned to his command of the SGC, Carter took command of the new Daedalus-class ship, the George Hammond. Under her command, the George Hammond later transported a group to the Icarus base. Shortly following this event, the base came under attack and Carter led the George Hammond in a defensive strike against what they suspected were three Lucian Alliance Hataks. After the planet's core destabilized, she ordered Colonel David Telford and his F-302 fighter pilots to retreat and enter hyperspace. She reported the situation to Lieutenant General Jack O'Neill at Homeworld Command. Later, she commanded the George Hammond in a battle with the Lucian Alliance over the Icarus planet. When the planet was going critical due to the instability of the Nequadria, she ordered a fallback of the invasion forces. They were forced to retreat before two F-302 fighter interceptors could be safely docked with the Hammond and the two F-302s and the two F-302s were destroyed along with the pilots on board who were killed in the attack. Hey, thank you for watching the history or biography of Samantha Carter. Special thanks to the Stargate Fandom Wiki page for all information. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you already have. Thank you. Also, if you're into Star Trek or World War I and II tanks, I also do a couple other history shows about those. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye.